Funding for Prairie Sportsman is provided by the Arrowwood Resort and Conference Center, designed for you for any season. Whether you're there for business pleasure or just plain relaxing, there's something for everyone. The Arrowwood, located on beautiful Lake Darling, just outside of Alexandria, Minnesota. Strike Master Ice Augers, helping anglers spend more time fishing and less time drilling. Lindy Legendary Fishing Tackle, angler tested and putting the fish into fishing for more than 35 years. And by the outdoor enthusiasts who are members of this station. again and welcome back to the show. We're glad to have you with us and we hope you enjoy what we've got lined up for you this week. We're going to follow along with a group of sportsmen on the hunt for waterfowl. We'll take a look at the sport of archery and hunting big game and we'll take a look at what chef Kurt Anderson cooks up this week. Stay tuned. Prairie Sportsman is coming up next. The sound of the mighty duck call echoes across the prairie. It's the sound of excitement to many sportsmen that are fortunate enough to experience the fun and thrill of the hunt. It all comes together for a group of sportsmen that gather for a day of waterfowl hunting. What's the sweetest music to a prairie sportsman? What makes a sunrise hunt the best? Danny Persicky knows what it is. Good times. Come in here, come in here. Over the top, over the top, behind. Danny loves the action and the beauty of a morning on a prairie slough. But most of all, he loves the action. Why don't you wait? The boys are quick to do their own retrieving of this kill because the dogs are not able to tread water for hours, and so these men must do the work of dogs. Have you noticed the cover that these hunters are hiding in? Yes, they are in a flooded out cornfield in western Minnesota. The whole shoreline is full of ducks here. Danny and the boys are in a waterfowl paradise. Live ducks swimming in the decoys.
gorgeous scenes of the fall harvest. And there's always the camaraderie. This is unbelievable. This is the best duck shooting sh I've had. So last time I had this good duck shooting down was when you were dying uh, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> it blows a lot better, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? It's, qu it's, sh it's quite sharper. What's the difference? Oh, it's a huge difference. Yeah. That blows so easy. Danny Persicky explains the scenario. We got about four dozen decoys set up. The winds of out of the southwest, and it's been a pretty good morning so far. We're having a little trouble now with the sun, so we're gonna try to get around that obstacle and uh, have some pretty good shooting here. So kind of stay tuned with us, and we'll try to get you some more of this good footage of Minnesota hunting. Let's see if it works out. It takes a little patience, but it always pays off. Chris Eisenminger brings in a redhead. Boris. Redhead? <laughs> you betcha. You see that redhead. That's beautiful. Can you hold it through a bit? Somehow that makes you a better duck shooter. Chris has been a busy boy this morning. The ducks are flying and the boys are shooting good. <laughs> they just keep bringing them in. And what would put the frosting on the cake? Now, the focus shifts to geese. Can Steve call another goose into the gun? Steve's a good man on the call. The ducks just can't see the boys in this standing corn. Chris tries to sweeten the pot and then gets caught by a flock coming in. Get back in the corn, Chris. Chris, you got to get out of here by 11, right? Yeah. But all good things must come to an end, and the A squad prepares to pull up the decoys and head for home. It's been a great day, and as the decoys are pulled, these prairie sportsmen can take pride in the fact that they were in standing water all day, doing a hard job, but loving the drama of the hunt.
All the work was not a big price to pay for the great eating each hunter would be blessed with. Duck hunting, the prairie sportsman's way. The saying is, practice makes perfect. And with bow hunters, there's a lot of practice. Practice, preparation, and patience are key ingredients for the sportsman that chooses to hunt with bow and arrow. It begins in the time of bugs this fall ritual. The bow opener is coming and preparations are going on out here on the prairie. Arrows are being flung. Costumes are put on for the arrow practice. The gloves you wear for practice are the gloves you'll wear in the field. Gloves not for cold weather but for bugs. That mask, that's to cover your face so the deer won't see it. Every thunk of an arrow in the vitals of that target brings you the confidence in your shot that means you have an edge. You are honed like a blade, just as sharp. Now let's pack up with tree steps and a pruner to trim branches. Maybe an extra face mask, too. Now, strap on your gear and get out there. In the field, a shot must be prepared. From previous scouting, this spot has been selected but not prepared. Can you take a shot from here to the field? Should you trim out a lane for a better shot? All must be in readiness when that deer shows up. She looks like a long-nosed doe that would make the best of eating. She doesn't seem upset by the buggage. The buggage that's driving the bow hunter crazy. But something seems to spook her, and she bolts into the corn. What would you be thinking right about now? The sun is going down. There's some time left, but you're going to have to be lucky to get a chance in the little time remaining. You size up a young buck, but can't see shooting him until he's older. Besides, there's plenty of time to get a doe.
Ah, uh, well, maybe tomorrow. Now it's day two, and you're back, but you'll try stand two this time for a change of pace. The wind's right, and you head out there to get in place. Scrub trees are more wide open, but the deer like to cross here. You check your shot, then you check your camel, then you try to hold still while the mosquitoes find you. But it's all gonna pay off this time. You have a visitor. Slowly move into action mode. It's go time. Focus on your target. Shoot true and you have venison. Blood trailing is an art. Looking for minute drops of blood on the ground would test the patience of a saint. Here's a good sign. His arrow indicates that it has passed through the deer. There's good sign here. It won't be long now. There she is. Whew, boy, the mosquitoes are crazy out here. Yeah, there's a, there's a nice dope. There's a nice feeder for us. There you have it. The rubber gloves come out next, and the gutting and drag will follow. Bow hunting is always a great time, and it all begins in your backyard. Let's look at a tip from Chef Kurt Anderson, our cooking guru from Arrowwood Resort and Conference Center near Alexandria, Minnesota. Sportsmen, you're back. You had a little bit of luck. You got yourself some duck or goose, or pheasant. Let me show you a nice little appetizer you could do with that. I've filleted out this breast. I've got a little bit of fat on there that I, I'll remove later. But I'm gonna just trim off the areas I don't require. I'm gonna roll them up. Once I've got a small bundle, and the trick here is to keep them small, I'm gonna pinch them between two slices of water chestnut, and I'm gonna roll that up with a strip of bacon. Now, you can pick these, and you maybe should if you're going to put them on a grill. However, in this case, we're going to saute them today. So I won't pick them because as I cook them, they're going to naturally shrink down and hold everything together anyway. Now, you're also able to pre-season this meat if you decide to. If you've got a real long strip of bacon like I had there, you'll want to cut that off. And then just remember to, when you put it in the pan, put it with the seam side down. 
Now I saved some of the duck livers too. Have you ever had ramaki? Ramaki is just liver that's wrapped in bacon. Tastes really good. So we're gonna wrap that up too and we're gonna make some ramakis as well. Now duck lends itself very well to this. We wanna be careful if we're using the meat on the leg of the duck because there's gonna be some tendon action there. We're gonna wanna cut away so it doesn't get overly chewy. All right, be back in a minute to show you what that looks like frying. All right, we've got them in the skillet. Once we get that, we put them with the, uh, the final end down on the bacon. Once we get that cooked, she'll hold in place. I'm adding a little bit of garlic salt to them. I like that taste, but you have to be careful about how much heat you're running, because as you can see, that garlic will want to discolor otherwise. So we're running a medium heat. We'll work them around a little bit, but they gotta get a little bit tighter, a little bit more done. A couple more minutes, should be time to eat. Hey, look, it looks like it's ready to eat. We're gonna turn down the heat, and over we come. Okay, the ramaki, the ones that had the liver, they were a little bit bigger. You can see that they've firmed up. They've turned nice and brown. I'm gonna set them in the right area here so the crew knows what to eat that's liver. Then the rest of it, this was the duck meat that was rolled. You see they stayed nice and tight. As long as we first put them in the pan with that end cut down, that worked out very well for us. This is a great little appetizer, one that even the kids and mom are sure to enjoy, simply because it's finger food at its finest. Give it a try at home. I'm sure you're going to like it. you have a photo you'd like to share, we'd like to see it. Here's a photo of a young fox hunter taken in the late 1940s in Swift County, western Minnesota. And here we see a nice set of fox pelts on display in front of a fine looking automobile. Send us a digital picture by email or an outdoor photo by mail to this address. We'd like to include your photo in our show. Your photos will be returned. Visit our website for more updates and photos. Thank you. I'm Tad Takasaki with the tip of the day. There's a wide variety of different fishing lines, but in general, let me talk about the purposes for each general category. The first one, the most all-purpose and all-around type of fishing line is the monofilament fishing line. You can use that particular fishing line for almost all different types of applications. Monofilament line has been around the longest and is probably the most general purpose. You can use this line in a lot of different types of applications because it comes in various colors, clear all the way to high vis. You can use it for fishing shallow. You can use it for trolling applications, but the real differentiator here is that monofilament has some stretch to it, so therefore you don't have to worry about ripping hooks out of the fish. You don't have to go to special types of rods. The next general type of fishing line that's out there are some of these new super braid type of lines. These super braids are quite different from monofilament in that they have absolutely no stretch whatsoever. The nice thing about that is that you can detect bites very easily. I use super braids for very deep water jigging, maybe trolling right behind the boat with crankbaits where you can see the actual crankbait working, the rod tip working, and if you get a weed on that particular crankbait, then you can tell that it stopped working. So the real difference here though is that you have to go with a little bit more limber rods and not set the hook quite as hard when you're using a super braid. The last type of line that's out there is called lead core. This is actually braided background with a lead core middle and what that allows me to do is to take shallow running lures like spinners or shallow running crankbaits and get them to dive a little bit deeper because the lead core middle of the line drags that lure deeper than you normally would with either super braids or with monofilament. I'm Ted Takasaki with your tip of the day.
Now, let's take a look at a few views of nature. Well, that's a wrap for this week. We hope to see you again next time for another edition of Prairie Sportsman. Funding for Prairie Sportsman is provided by the Arrowwood Resort and Conference Center, designed for you for any season. Whether you're there for business pleasure, or just plain relaxing, there's something for everyone. The Arrowwood, located on beautiful Lake Darling, just outside of Alexandria, Minnesota. Strike Master Ice Augers, helping anglers spend more time fishing and less time drilling. Lindy Legendary Fishing Tackle, angler tested and putting the fish into fishing for more than 35 years. And by the outdoor enthusiasts who are members of this station.